23rd of December 1991, the Corsicana home of Cameron Willingham burned. Willingham's three children, two-year-old Amber Kikendall and one-year-old twins Carmen and Cameron Willingham, died of smoke inhalation. Willingham escaped. Willingham told authorities that the fire started while he and the children were asleep. His wife, Stacy Kikendall, was not home at the time. An investigation showed that a flammable liquid had been poured throughout the house. Willingham was arrested on the 8th of January. At Willingham's trial, the fire marshal testified that the floors, front threshold, and front concrete porch were burned, which only occurs when an accelerant has been used to purposely burn these areas. He further testified that these areas are typically set on fire to impede firefighters in their rescue attempts. Other testimony showed that Willingham deliberately set the fire to kill his children. Neighbors testified that Willingham came outdoors as the house began smoldering, before flames were visible from the outside. He first pushed his car away to protect it from being burned, then crouched down in the front yard. Despite their pleas, Willingham refused to go into the house to attempt to rescue the children, they said. A firefighter testified that Willingham showed no grief over his children's deaths, but became upset upon discovering that his dartboard was burned. A neighbor also testified that on the day after the fire, Willingham and his wife were going through the debris while playing music and laughing. Willingham was convicted of burglary three months before the fire, and was serving a sentence of six years probation. Testimony at his trial indicated that Willingham had a history of violence and family abuse, including an incident where he beat his pregnant wife with a telephone to try to force a miscarriage. A jury convicted Willingham of capital murder in August 1993 and sentenced him to death. The Texas Court of Criminal Appeals affirmed the conviction and sentence in October 1995. All of his subsequent appeals in state and federal court were denied. Dude's a liar, Willingham said in an interview from Death Row, referring to the fire marshal. He called his conviction a farce. He suggested that a lantern spilled fluid when a shelf collapsed, and then two-year-old Amber, who was fascinated with everything, accidentally started the fire. Either that, or someone came in with the intent to kill me and the children, he told a reporter. Willingham said that his wife was out shopping that morning, and he was asleep when Amber woke him. He saw smoke, jumped out of bed, and ordered Amber out of the house. He tried to get to the twins' room, but couldn't get past the flames. He ran outside to get help because the house had no phone. They were great kids, Willingham said, but I was a sorry husband, a piece of crap as husbands go. I was so full of myself and dumb. Stacy Kike and Al initially supported her husband and testified on his behalf at his trial. Recently, however, she told a reporter that she no longer believes his account of the events that killed her children. The fire occurred on December 23, 1991 in Corsicana, Texas. Lighter fluid was kept on the front porch of Willingham's house as evidenced by a melted container found there. Some of this fluid may have entered the front doorway of the house carried along by fire hose water. It was alleged this fluid was deliberately poured to start the fire and that Willingham chose this entrance way so as to impede rescue attempts. The prosecution also used other arson theories that have since been brought into question. In addition to the arson evidence, a jailhouse informant claimed Willingham confessed that he set the fire to hide his wife's physical abuse of the girls. Although the girls showed no other injuries besides those caused by the fire. Neighbors also testified that Willingham did not try hard enough to save his children. They allege he crouched down in his front yard and watched the house burn for a period of time without attempting to enter the home or go to neighbors for help or request they call firefighters. 
He claimed that he tried to go back into the house but it was too hot. As firefighters arrived, however, he rushed towards the garage and pushed his car away from the burning building, requesting firefighters do the same rather than put out the fire. After the fire, Willingham showed no emotion at the death of his children and spent the next day sorting through the debris, laughing and playing music. He expressed anger after finding his dartboard burned in the fire. Firefighters and other witnesses found him suspicious of how he reacted during and after the fire. Willingham was charged with murder on January 8, 1992. During his trial in August 1992, he was offered a life term in exchange for a guilty plea, which he turned down insisting he was innocent. After his conviction, he and his wife divorced. She later stated that she believed that Willingham was guilty. Prosecutors alleged this was part of a pattern of behavior intended to rid himself of his children. Willingham had a history of committed crimes, including burglary, grand larceny and car theft. There was also an incident when he beat his pregnant wife over the stomach with a telephone to induce a miscarriage. When asked if he had a final statement, Willingham said, yeah. The only statement I want to make is that I am an innocent man, convicted of a crime I did not commit. I have been persecuted for 12 years for something I did not do. From God's dust I came and to dust I will return, so the earth shall become my throne. I gotta go, road dog. I love you Gabby. However, his final words were directed at his ex-wife, Stacy Willingham. He turned to her and said I hope you rot in hell, bitch, several times while attempting to extend his middle finger in an obscene gesture. His ex-wife did not show any reaction to this. He was executed by lethal injection on February 17, 2004. Proclaiming his innocence and spewing profanities at his ex-wife standing a few feet away. An angry former auto mechanic was executed Tuesday, February 17, 2004 evening, for the deaths of his three young children in a fire at their home two days before Christmas 12 years ago prior to his execution. His last meal was, three barbecued pork ribs, two orders of onion rings, fried okra, three beef enchiladas with cheese, and two slices of lemon creme pie. After examining evidence from the capital prosecution of Cameron Willingham, four national arson experts have concluded that the original investigation of Willingham's case was flawed, and it is possible the fire was accidental. The independent investigation, reported by the Chicago Tribune, found that prosecutors and arson investigators used arson theories that have since been repudiated by scientific advances. Willingham was executed in 2004 in Texas despite his consistent claims of innocence. He was convicted of murdering his three children in a 1991 house fire. Arson expert Gerald Hurst said, There's nothing to suggest to any reasonable arson investigator that this was an arson fire. It was just a fire. Former Louisiana State University fire instructor Kendall he said it made him sick to think this guy was executed based on this investigation. They executed this guy, and they've just got no idea, at least not scientifically, if he set the fire, or if the fire was even intentionally set. Willingham was convicted of capital murder after arson investigators concluded that 20 indicators of arson led them to believe that an accelerant had been used to set three separate fires inside his home. Among the only other evidence presented by prosecutors during the, the trial was testimony from jailhouse snitch Johnny E. Webb, a drug addict on psychiatric medication, who claimed Willingham had confessed to him in the county jail. Evidence discovered years after the Willingham execution showed that the prosecution had given Webb favorable treatment then deliberately elicited perjured testimony from Webb that he had been promised and given nothing for his testimony. Some of the jurors who convicted Willingham were troubled when told of the new case review. 
Juror Doreen Dabrokovsky asked, Did anybody know about this prior to his execution? Now I will have to live with this for the rest of my life. Maybe this man was innocent. Prior to the execution, Willingham's defense attorneys presented expert testimony regarding the new arson investigation to the state's highest court, as well as to Texas Governor Rick Perry. No relief was granted and Willingham was executed on February 17, 2004. Coincidentally, less than a year after Willingham's execution, Arson evidence presented by some of the same experts who had appealed for relief in Willingham's case helped free Ernest Willis from Texas's death row. The experts noted that the evidence in the Willingham case was nearly identical to the evidence used to exonerate Willis. Thank you for watching Death Row.